Um, but yeah, Canadian volleyball is very interesting because we don't have a domestic tour. So when you are done your university or within your university and you choose beach volleyball, you have to actively just fly to Thailand and lose in qualifiers, right? So you're spending lots of money for very little kind of success just because you're not used to playing and you're not used to kind of having those intense moments and the the struggle and the pressure um, because you don't get to play in competition often. You have to to fly to Thailand and lose in qualifiers. That's the first step. That's literally, (laughs) that was my first step. And that's why I say it. It's my very first FIVB. I was 16 years old. I played with Victoria Altamar. Um, I don't know why she played with me, but anyways. And we lost in the qualifier in a monsoon. We played in a monsoon and courts were flooded. They made Mm. us change courts halfway through our match, which was wild. I couldn't see her. Like that's how much it was raining. Man. This is the time that they had the lucky loser. Um, and so we go to the technical meeting praying that we're going to get lucky loser. Yeah. We go to lucky loser and there's three teams and they put two in like whatever their hat and they pull it out 50, 50, not us. Great. Okay. One more chance. Let's go. Fingers crossed. Same oh. thing. Put our names in a hat, pull out the other team. I'm like, you have to be kidding me. Like 16 year old Soph in Thailand with Victoria Altamar, who couldn't be more than 21 at the time, yeah. which crazy that my mom let me go by myself. <laughs> um, but that was my first experience of a world tour. And I'm like, yeah. is this what it's like? Because I don't know if I can do this. Like, this is wild. Yeah. So that's why I say, like, yes, fly to Thailand, lose, and see if you really want to do it. Made of. See if at you really want to do it. started right at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, like, it exactly. It much worse than that. No, <laughs> it doesn't. But no, there is more help with the Federation now that we've had really successful teams who are kind of paving the way for us. Um, I'm optimistic that it'll get better. I don't know if we'll ever have a domestic tour in my lifetime of playing volleyball, but, um, in terms of the support from the Federation, it's getting better yeah. and that's all you can ask for. Yeah. It's not great, but it'll get there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you, I mean, you go to Thailand and you lose in that qualifier, mm-hmm. and you, that that's a moment where you do a little soul search and you find out what you're made of yep. like, and here you are, you know, you're, you're traveling around, you're ranked in the top six on the planet, Yeah. which is pretty amazing. Why did you continue playing? Like what? Ooh. Why did you make that decision? Um, well, first I just love competition, mm-hmm. but when I talk to people about the big why of why you're playing, which is everyone's kind of go-to thing, it's because I love the moments that you surprise yourself. Like I love like that. thinking yeah. that you can't do something and then in one moment you're like, "Holy smokes, I did that." Right. That becomes your new benchmark. You're like, "Okay, now we got to up the ante a little bit mm-hmm. up the standard." So, I just love those moments in practice, in matches, like you know, winning the, winning the semifinal at Worlds, I looked at Brandy and I was like, holy smokes, we just did that. It didn't feel as like monumental or as, as big as I envisioned it to feel, but it was so nice just to take a step back and be like, holy smokes, we did that. Yeah. So like those moments and that feeling is like absolutely why I play. Yeah. Because I've had a lot of those in my career. I'm very mm-hmm. fortunate. Like first national championships with USC, that was a moment. First, you know, gold medal at the under 21 world championships, mm-hmm. that was a moment. <clears throat> and again, it's not about the successes. It's like the little wins as well, but yeah. When they lead to the big successes, it feels just as good. Yeah. I mean, yeah. everyone always says it's not about the big successes, but it, it kind of is. You Those know, are just reassurances. Yeah. Like they're, <laughs> yeah. they're just nice to know that you're on the right track and you're doing the right things. Did yeah. you feel like you were setting your goals like along throughout your whole journey? You were setting your goals like I'm a kid and I want to be an Olympic gold medalist or was mm-hmm. like, I just want to win right here in college. Like that would be the coolest thing in the world. And then next it was like, I just want to make the world tour mm-hmm. or was it long term? It's always been long term. Mm. Yeah. I think um, after Tia and I had pretty good success at the under 21 World Championships and we won the first gold medal for women on the FIVB World Tour. Tia Merch for anyone who. Cal Poly shout out. Yeah. That like that taste of it. I was like, I want to do that at the Olympics. Like I want to win the first gold medal at the Olympics and do kind of that like synonymous closing of a book type thing. Yeah. So, yeah. 